So guess what? I went ahead and I pretty much installed a macOS Sonoma, or Sonoma, I'm not too sure how you say it, on the oldest supported MacBook Air, which apparently is the 2018 MacBook Air. And funny enough, I actually do own this specific MacBook Air, so it was very easy for me to install it. Now the install process when I actually installed it, I had to have a developer beta account to do it, so I did buy the developer beta account, but apparently there is a free option that Apple has now allowed you to do it. So with that being said, I would never recommend installing a beta on any device out there, and I can promise you if you own any sort of Mac, installing a beta on a Mac is probably one of the worst things you can possibly do. I would rather install 10 betas on one iPhone than install one beta on a Mac OS machine, and the reason for that is because on a Mac, I just don't think there's enough beta testers in general on Macs for there to be as many, you know, I guess, f bug fixes compared to iOS. That's just kind of how I've seen it. And with all the betas I've ever installed, I've had tons of issues, especially on the oldest supported Mac. So on my MacBook Air, the install process, fairly easy. I did have to install macOS, like the latest version of macOS, the previous version. And then I was able to see that beta version pop up. So it was kind of weird. I don't know why that even happened. And that's just kind of what happens when you're getting these types of Macs and you're installing these betas on them because they do kind of overheat these machines quite a bit. Now, I would recommend also if you're doing it, if you're going to install it, don't do it. But if you are, make sure you are pretty much having your MacBook Air plugged in. That's a big thing to keep in mind. Now, when I first installed it, I honestly didn't even see too many changes from the previous version of macOS. It kind of looks exactly the same exact thing to me. In fact, when I take a look at macOS Sonoma, like the main page, like their like feature page, even the features they mention aren't even that crazy, like screensavers, that's really cool. Widgets on desktop, I think that's nice. And also some other things like access iPhone widgets on Mac and widgets fade for better focus. Like, there's some things that Apple added, which is nice, but I don't think they're like crazy features. I mean, to be honest, I don't even remember the last crazy feature they've added on a Mac OS, you know, software update that I was like, oh my goodness, I have to update. Some of these things seem like kind of nice to have features. For example, the ability of reacting with your hands on a FaceTime call is really awesome, but I honestly don't even know if this works on the 2018 MacBook Air. They also have some other supported features if you have the universal mode, if you have like the specific feature on your iPhone where you're using the continuity camera. You do have some more features there, which is really nice. But there are some features that, again, are nice to have. Like you can create profiles within Safari. There's, I guess, some improvements on the back end for searches and just, you know, compatibility issues and things like that that should be fixed, you know, hopefully in the next couple of betas. But one thing I will tell you is that it is still kind of a choppy experience. On these, you know, Intel Macs, especially on these older Intel MacBook Airs, I haven't really been having too great of an experience with them. In fact, on pretty much every Intel machine I've had, even on my 16-inch 2019 MacBook Pro that was like kind of maxed out, the fans would kick up all the time. Some of these MacBook Airs, I don't think any of them have fans, but sometimes like some of them do, I don't really understand. What the thing is with some of these MacBook Airs is that they just ramp up like crazy. They get hot, they get annoying, and those are some really big issues that some people have experienced with these types of Macs, and I've personally experienced these types of issues too. So that can be some annoying stuff, but also when you think about it, with some of these MacBook Airs, including the 2018 MacBook Air, the problem with this is that essentially a lot of the features within the next version of Mac OS aren't actually there. So that's kind of an annoying issue too. If you're planning on getting every single version of Mac OS Sonoma, like every single feature within Mac OS Sonoma on your 2018 MacBook Air, that's just not going to happen. So that is kind of the issue going on here. It's not the end of the world, but it is one of those things to keep in mind. So at the end of the day, to kind of round up this whole entire video, again, please do not install Mac OS Sonoma, the beta, on your 2018 MacBook Air. But to be honest, I really don't think there's a rush in even installing this update in the first place. I think it's a very, very average update. I think there's some really nice, nice to have features, but much like iOS 17, not really anything crazy for coming from the previous version. And if you're not really seeing any features that I mentioned today, or if you go on their macOS feature page and there's nothing that stands out, there's no point in even installing the beta. You might as well wait until the official version comes out. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, hold on.